All right, so 10.1, the rectangular coordinate system. As a matter of fact, let's do this. I'm gonna have this somewhere else. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do this. Let's go here. This is exactly what I was going to write. 10.1 uh, rectangular coordinate system. It's also called the Cartesian coordinate plane. Where we have two axes, a horizontal axis which is your x-axis, vertical axis, which is your y-axis. Where they intersect, that will be your origin. The coordinates of your origin will be zero, zero. Everything to the right of your origin will be positive. Everything to the left of your origin is negative. Above your origin, positive. Below your origin is negative. They make up four quadrants going counterclockwise, Quadrant one, two, three, and four. To get into quadrant one, you will make two positive moves. Quadrant two, you will go to the left and then go up, so that's negative and positive. Quadrant three, you make two negative moves. And quadrant four, you will make a positive and then a negative move. I'll give you guys a chance to write that down. Also, we will be graphing by what we call ordered pairs. Call ordered pairs because the order matters. Your x uh, coordinate will be first, y coordinate will be second. That will always be the case. So your horizontal move first, then your vertical move. Um, you know, you think about your run and then jump or you walk, go, to, go down to the elevator, or just remember that X comes before Y in the alphabet, but your X move is first, then your Y move, so your horizontal move first, and then your vertical move. All right. Let me erase some of this so we can... All right, so let's uh, walk through this a little bit. So if we have uh, these points and we want to graph, 
like I mentioned before, you always do your X move first and then your Y. So if I'm looking at positive two and positive five, you always start at your origin. You always start at your origin. And yeah, I guess I'll stay green. And I will go to the right two because it's positive. Positive two and then up five. And that'll be right there, two, five. So that'll put me in quadrant one. Next one, negative one, negative three, I'll go to the left one because it's negative and then down three, once again, because it's negative, that'll put me in quadrant three. Two negative moves will put you in quadrant three. <laughs> negative four, positive two, I will go to the left four and then up to puts me in quadrant two. Then for the fourth one, one negative five, I go to the right one, down five. And that puts me in quadrant four. All right, before we look at the last two, any questions on, on, on graphing any of these points? No, not yet. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the last two. Notice we have a zero involved. So that means we wouldn't make a move when we see a zero. So that first one, three, zero, I would go to the right three. And then I would stay right there because I can't move. I would go to the right three and not move up or down. Five, one. So that'll be right there. And that means that would sit on the X axis. It wouldn't actually be in the quadrant. And then so that would be, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. So yeah. if it would ask us a question, that would be the answer. So it wouldn't be the question. It would be just be X, mm -hmm. X, is X, X, Y, X, mm -hmm. X. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If either one of your points or either one of your um, components of your coordinates is zero, then it's going to be on one of the axes. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. And so getting to that next one you wouldn't move left or right because X is zero, but then you would just go up three. And that would be on the Y axis. All right, questions on graphing on either one of those points. All right, solutions. In order pairs a solution of an equation, if the equation is true after the ordered pair is plugged in. So an example, we have four X minus three Y equal to negative two. And if they set it up this way, colon one, two, then all they want you to do, and they'll say, you know, is this ordered pairs a solution? And like I said, it's set it up this way. And so they just want you to take uh, one and two and plug it into the equation. I'll give you a chance to finish writing. So just tell me how to set up yours.
All right. So, as I mentioned before, the first component of your coordinate is x. The second is y. So it means x is 1, y is 2. So we plug them in accordingly. That's 4x minus 3y. So that's 4 times 1 minus 3 times 2. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And in this case, negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So the answer is yes, it is an ordered pair. So if it ended up being something different, in other words, created a false statement, if it said 1 equal to negative 2 or 5 equal to negative 2, then the answer would be no. Um, it would not be a solution. I'm, I'm, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I got kind of lost on the 2 and negative 2. And I would just bring it down because it's the answer to the um to the right. oh, okay, mm -hmm. I was like, duh. <laughs> I had a little bit of a dumb moment. I'm like, where you get the twos from? All right, then. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, mm -hmm. so, are you saying the answer would be true if it equals each other? If it comes down and give you a true statement, the answer is yes, it is a solution. Okay, and remind me of what a true statement is. Negative okay. two equal to negative two. So, a basic. Does, Go ahead. Well, let me ask you. So, does negative two equal to negative two? The answer would be yes. That yes. is, that's true. Right. So now, if it came down and said this, then that's false because because one is not equal to negative two. Okay, I understand. That's where I was getting confused at. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And so, just in case anybody else missed it, um, what she was asking about is that. You know, once you plug in the value of x and y, everything else comes down. So the four comes down, that three, and that negative two. So everything else comes down. And um, then you just continue on with the simplifying of the problem. Anything else before we go down? Excuse me, what is going on here? <laughs> and so, there are going to be infinitely many solutions to your linear equation. This is called a linear equation. There will be infinitely many solutions. It's called a linear equation because it's going to create a line. Oh no, we didn't mean to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to create a line when we graph it. And so every point that's on that line will represent a solution for that equation. As I say, it would fall. It would fall on that line, right? Like to make the the form the straight line. Mm -hmm. So okay. when we when we graph, if we were to graph this, one two would be on that graph on that line. Okay, got it. All right. Now, if it came down and ended up being false, that point wouldn't be on that line. Right, and so okay, so like when you graph the dots, you could basically see if if it was true or not because it wouldn't fall on the line. Is mm -hmm. that the right concept? Okay, mm -hmm. yep. all right. All right, so we're doing that uh, one more time. This time we have y equal to three x minus five, and I have two points to try to see if they'll give us a solution. Have the order pair of two, three, order pair of three, four. Plug in y right here, plug in x right here, and simplify. Make sure everybody got it before I go up. All right, so the first one, plugging in two, three. Plugging in three for y, and then two for x. So that's three on the left, three times two is six. Six minus five is one. So we have three equal to one, which is not true. So that means that is not a solution. Right. Take three, four. And do the same. That means four for y, three for x. Nine, three times three is nine. Nine minus five is four. 
4 equal to 4 is true. And so that means it is a solution. Wait. Can you scroll back up to the. Oh, that one? Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. Okay, so y equals 3x minus 5. So where did 2 come from? They gave it to you. They gave you two points to plug in. They gave you this to plug in as an order pair. So that's what we did here. Okay. And they gave you this one to plug in. And that's what we did here. So in this exercise, all of this would be given. And okay. say, pl plug in those two order pairs and see which one is the order. See which oh, one okay. is the solution. Questions on this exercise. sections are for you guys. So when it comes to graphing linear equations, we have three methods in which we'll be able to do so. Hold on one second. So we have three methods in which we'll be able to do so. We, have, we can graph by using the xy chart we can grab by using the intercepts and then we can grab by using the slope so let me see which sections they have this lined up for you guys and the equations are going to be this All right, so that's how this will be broken up for you guys. So just generally graphing using your XY chart will be in 10.2. Graphing using your intercepts, 10.3. And then in 10.4, we'll be using our slopes to graph. All right. So when you go about graphing and, um, you know, it just say graph, then you can use either method. They all will give you the same line. It's just that, you know, it depends on what you're more comfortable with and what's easiest for you, depending on what you're presented. Sometimes that can dictate that as well. Um, but of course, while you're in those sections, they're going to ask you questions that will force you to use those methods. But, you know, once you get out of that and all you have to do is graph, it doesn't matter which method you use. Also, notice we're talking about graphing linear equations keyword there's line so you shouldn't get anything but a line you know if you get any type of zigzag curves or anything of that nature you know you know you're doing something wrong uh, we're only supposed to get straight lines only supposed to be getting straight lines okay. so let's look at the first method and i'm going to erase some stuff so we can walk through it All right, so let's grab using the XY chart. If they give us the equation, 
y equal to 2x plus 1. And it asks us a graph by generating the xy chart. Basically, you choose um, some values. You choose some x values to plug in. And then you're going to find a corresponding y value. Um, I'm used to choosing three values. That's what we always did when um, that's how I was taught to do it. You know, if you, uh, you know, grab two points and that third one will help give you a system of counter checks, you know, because if one of them off with two points, you wouldn't know it, you know, but a third one will let you know. But when it comes to my math lab, <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to my math lab, you can only grab two points. So if you only do two points, then that's fine. But uh, just remember that um, you should do a third point to make sure that you're on track. But uh, you only can grab two points in my math lab anyway. But I always do three points. So I chose negative one, zero, and one. I always choose um, simple values. Um, it doesn't matter what values you choose. Whatever you choose, just remember you're gonna to have to calculate it and you're gonna to have to graph it. So you don't wanna to get too crazy with it. You don't wanna choose one fifty and then one million because you're gonna to have to graph that. So I always try to choose something simple, one, two, three, uh, something like that. So you choose an X value that you're gonna plug in to find the corresponding Y value. Because for every X value that you plug in, there is a Y value, a specific Y value that, that flows along with it. So let's look at negative, two, negative one. So that's two times negative one plus one, or you just plug it in for X to find out what Y would be. So that's negative two plus one, and that's negative one. So it just so happens that when you plug in negative one, you get negative one in this case. That will not always be the case, of course. Do it again for zero. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And one more time for positive 1. All right, before we go any further, questions on what we did. You choose some x values to plug in to find the corresponding y value. Then you plug them in and do just that. Once you do that, you'll have some ordered pairs. And then you'll be able to graph them. And once you graph them, it will represent that line that we talked about. Um, it, will, it will give you the line that we talked about that represents the equation and all of the ordered pairs that fall on, on, on that line will be solutions for the equation. All right, any questions before we graph? Right. So this is what your line should look like. So you would go to your origin. You always start at your origin for each point. Remember that? You would go to the left one, down one. It'll put us right here. Go back to your origin. You don't move left or right for zero one because the first point, first move is zero. And then you'll just go up one. Go back to your origin for one, three. Go to the right one, up three. And then you connect the dots. Notice I have arrows at the end of each, um, at the end of the line on each side. So that just means it goes on to infinity in that direction in those directions. And that's why it doesn't matter what value you choose for um, your x. If you have a value way over here, let's say 20, it will give you a point that connect up here that will still give you the same line. Same thing if you chose something um, like negative 50, it will give you a value that's way down bottom that will still connect with that line. So it doesn't matter what values you choose, just remember though, whatever you choose, you do have to graph and you have to calculate it. All right, questions before we go and uh, do it again. 
Could you repeat what you just said about the uh, grafting in the numbers? Make sure you do what? Uh, whatever you choose, just remember you have to graph it. So you don't want to choose anything um, too ridiculous. Uh, oh, okay. But I was saying it doesn't matter though, if you, let's say if you had some type of computer that was going to graph it for you, if you chose 1 million, it's going to give you a point that's going to connect with this line. It's just going to be way, you know, up there. Okay. Yeah. But it still will give you the same line. So that's why I said it didn't matter what, you know, what values you choose for X, but just remember whatever you choose, you're going to have to graph it by hand, you know, or by, you know, in the computer. Got it. So, yeah. All right, so let me erase this. Um, let's look at this first. So here we have negative three over five x, negative three fifths x plus two. And here we want to be strategic in the values that we choose. Because if I just chose negative one or positive one, oh, get my pen back. That'll be three fifths times one plus two. Three fifths plus two will, will still give us a fraction. And we don't want to have to graph a fraction if we don't have to. And most of the time when in, in my math lab, they're going to put you in a position not to graph a fraction. So we're going to choose multiples of the denominator. So notice I chose negative five, zero, and five. If I had uh, four sevens x, then I would choose multiples of seven. So whether it be a uh, seven zero seven, uh, seven fourteen twenty eight, something that seven can divide into even, evenly. If it was eleven, I would choose eleven twenty two thirty three. Things that eleven can divide into evenly. So that's what we're talking about: multiples of the denominator. If I want it or if you want it, because I already chose my values, you could do five, 10, 15, 20, you know, something that five can divide into evenly. All right. Any questions on that? So whenever you have a fraction, or before we didn't have a fraction involved, you know, but if you do have a fraction, you want to choose multiples of that denominator so that the denominator can divide into the numbers that you choose evenly. Negative five. X. Can you scroll down a little bit? Right here. We're the 15. Uh -huh. Are you talking about for the problem that we're dealing with? Yes. Or for the old problem? The problem we're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, yeah, we don't. <laughs> I was just trying to write so I can listen <laughs> as you talk. I'm, I'm trying to write some extra notes and you out there. You... <laughs> uh, uh, I want to write this. I just want to write that, that's all. Um, so just numbers that the denominator can divide into evenly. All right, so plugging in negative five. Got negative three fifths times negative five plus two. That negative five times negative three will give you a positive 15 over five. 15 divided by five is three. Three plus two is five. So that'll be a five right here. I'm a little confused with this. All right. So, a question on that? Yeah. When you get the 15, you do with it. All right. So, right here, negative three times negative five gives you the 15. Because uh -huh. remember, that's, you know, that's a fraction that's over one. So you okay. Just line across. Okay. And, and then 15 divided by 5 is 3. 
Oh, I got, I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the scenario that multiply. That's what the scenario that choosing multiples of your denominator will create for you. The fraction is now, you know, gone because the five can divide into an even. And so that's okay, what you want to create, it. that type of scenario. All right. Same thing with zero. Plug in zero, negative three-fifths times zero is zero. So that's always the easiest one to, to, find, to use or to choose is zero. And zero plus two is two. Mm, let's stay consistent with the colors. And for the last one, we have negative three fifths times five plus two. So once again, negative three times five, just those numerators. In this case would be negative 15. Negative 15 divided by five would be negative three. Negative three plus two is negative one. Has a chance to finish writing. All right, is everybody okay before we grab? So the first point was negative five, five. So I'll go to the left five, up five, which is right here. Then zero, two, I will go nowhere for X, but up two. Then I'll go to the right five, down one for five, negative one. All right, make sure we are good. Uh, negative five. Five. Uh, negative five. All right, any questions? I hope I don't lose my connection. It keeps telling me my internet is unstable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I haven't heard any type of glitches in your in your sound, so you've been okay on my end. All right. So let's look at the next method and then we'll stop here. All right, looking at your intercepts. All right, your x-intercept is where the graph intercepts or crosses the x-axis. Your y-intercept is where the graph crosses or intercepts the y-axis. Characteristic of all x-intercepts is that y is always zero. Characteristic of all x intercepts, I mean, excuse me, y intercepts, is the x is always zero. So it's the opposite. If you're looking for your x intercept, you know that y is always zero. If you're looking for your y intercept, you know that x is always zero. Uh, let me redraw that line. I didn't like that line. Yeah. All right, um, questions? Anything that's written so far before we actually put this to work? Yeah, not yet. Um, 
I'm still writing. <laughs> I'm trying to draw this line better. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, I'm done. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you were waiting on <laughs> no, I was just playing around with notes, cleaning up stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let me erase some of this stuff so we can walk through it. All right. So we have the equation. 2x plus 3y equal to 12. All right, and we want to graph using our intercepts. Doesn't matter which intercept we find first, whether it's the x-intercept or y-intercept, just have to remember the characteristic, the main characteristic of each. So if I'm looking for the x-intercept, the main characteristic that we have to hold on to is that y is equal to zero. So I can plug in zero for y and then find x. So that's what I did. I had 2x plus 3y equal to 12. I plug in 0 for y. So that's 3 times 0, which would cancel out and leave me with 2x equal to 12. All right. Now that I have 2x equal to 12, if you divide by 2, X is equal to six, which gives me the ordered pair of six, zero. Before we go to the y-intercept, any questions on how we found the x-intercept? Looking for, once again, if you're looking for the x-intercept, you let y be equal to zero. If you're looking for the y-intercept, you let x be equal to zero. So you let the opposite be equal to zero, whichever one you're trying to find. Six, x, zero, okay. And so we let y be equal to zero. Three times y, three times zero, excuse me, is zero. Leaves us with 2x equal to 12 divided by 2. That gives us x equal to 6. To find the y intercept, you let x be equal to zero, as I mentioned. So we plug in zero for x. Two times zero cancels, and that leaves you with 3y equal to 12. Divide by three, y is equal to four. And be careful here, a lot of times uh, people can uh, make a little bit of a mistake. Remember your ordered pair is always gonna be x, y. So that means my uh, first component will be zero and then the second will be four, so it'd be zero, four. Also don't make the mistake of running the points together. I've seen people, uh, you know, getting, I guess in the heat of the test, and put the points together and just do six, four, and they graph the one point and then go on. But so we'll be graphing lines, so you need at least two points. So they don't come together to make a super point. It's just one point that's six, zero, and the other point is zero, four. Say it again. Sometimes people make a mistake and join the points together and make one super point of six, four. Mm -hmm. I was saying don't do that, that's all. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to make sure people don't do that. <laughs> okay, because you were actually writing six, zero, and zero, four. 
Right. Those are two okay, different got points. it. Mm -hmm. All two right. Different points. So when you would graph it, it would be the x would be x would be x would be six and it would be zero and it would be zero and four. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what we did down here. Any questions for do another one? All right. Five X minus four Y equal to twenty. So gonna erase some of this stuff so we can talk about it again. Same process though. Um, you want to find the x-intercept, you let y be equal to zero. You want to find the y-intercept, you let x be equal to zero. All right, so starting off with the intercept, I'll plug in zero for y. Four times zero cancels, leaving me with just 5x equal to 20. Divide by 5. x is equal to 4. That's 4, 0. All right, then the next one, plug in x for zero. I'll plug in zero for x, yeah. Five times zero cancels, stay red. Then uh, make sure you don't lose this negative right here. That's a minus four y, so when that five times zero cancels, that still leaves you with a negative four. And divide by negative four. And y is equal to negative five. So that would be zero, negative five. Any questions? All right. So grab the two points. Be fine if I trade line. What in? Said it again. I said I'd be all right if I could draw a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> that line is looking a little sappy over here. <laughs> it's crooked. Any questions on that method? Mm. 
All right. So last thing out of this section, last thing for today. And we'll be good to go. So horizontal lines. Notice, let me go back here. Notice what we've always said when we're trying to graph. We have X and Y involved. But if you see or given an equation when it's just Y, oh, that mean erase. It's just Y. Notice we have Y equal to five. This means that no matter what X is, Y is going to be that number. So in this case, you know, Y will always be five. So you can choose anything for X, but no matter what you do, Y is always going to be five. And what that will do is when you go to graph it, you go to left one, up five, zero, up five, and then to right one, up five, and it will give you this horizontal line at five. So if that was Y equal to seven, then no matter what you choose for X, Y would be equal to seven. If that was Y equal to 11, no matter what you choose for X, Y would be, uh, your Y's would be 11, and it would create a horizontal line at those numbers. I have a question. You said they would give us, give us this value? They would give the you, question is, they will give you this Y it? equal to five and say graph. Uh -huh. And then from that, you should know this relationship right here, that no matter what, Y is always five. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So notice there's no X, it's just Y equal to five. That is your equation, so. All right. So that that's not about calculation, just observation. You recognize that there's no x value, no x variable. So you know whatever you have, y is going to be that number. And then the same thing happened for vertical lines. But in, instead of getting y equal to, you have x equal to. So if I have x equal to negative two, that means x is always going to be negative two, no matter what y is. Remember, Y can be anything. And so you graph that. It goes to the left two, up one, left two, up two, left two, up three, and that will give me a vertical line at negative two. All right, questions. Mm -mm. Right now, yep, that's it for those sections. Yeah, the next thing we'll do is talk about slopes, and we can do that on next class. So, questions before we close out today? No. All right, y'all. I have any more. All right, cool, cool. So, y'all, we're gonna hurry up and get out of here. Let Miss Christina go because she won't fit in class today anyway. <laughs> Here's what it is. It's over with now. <laughs> so, 
With that being said, guys, uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email. If you did email me within the last day or so, um, had some things to go down, so I'm a little back, you know, behind on that. I'll be responding to those today. But outside of that, I will see you guys next class, and you have a good one. Uh, you too. All right. Thank you. Take care.